Hey, this is the second video in the CODA series, so if you haven't seen the first video, go check that out first. The night before departure. I had everything double checked for my lists. Yep, I made lists. I wanted to get this right. Nothing can go wrong. I just need to get up early, go pick up the trailer, get the car on it, and then head out. The truck was already packed. What could go wrong? Yep, I was panicking. Truck and trailer is fine with snow, but the issue is getting a low supercar down a snowy driveway and then onto a trailer ramp on summer tires. We were forecast to get nearly half a foot of snow too. Yikes. I text the guy that I had been paying to shovel my driveway and asked him if he'd be able to get out there really early. I even offered to pay extra. I sent him this picture from Google Earth to try to explain that I also needed the street plowed right in front of the driveway if possible, and explain why, because obviously that probably sounded weird. As an extra measure, I raced down to the local Walmart to get rock salt. I then coated the R8 side of the driveway to ensure no ice pack forms. I knew it wouldn't stop the half foot of snow from piling on top of it, I just didn't want ice or anything to like fuse it into the driveway. Between the rock salt and the guy coming to shovel it, I was in luck. The street and driveway were both dry, I was able to get the car loaded without any problems. Whew! Dodge the bullet. Had I not taken both precautions though, I probably would have been screwed. We did have to use a sleeve for the receiver though, because despite the fact that I asked for a half ton, a uh, city rental truck gave me a huge F350, and the truck's so big that it also affected the height uh, of the trailer in relation to the truck, so we had to reverse the hitch to flip it around to get the trailer level. But once it was flipped, it was perfect. It was just annoying that we had to deal with that. A lot of our friends left Thursday and did the roughly 11 hour drive in one go. I went with a smaller group of friends who wanted to split it into two drives. We met up at Stonegate Motor Plaza where some of my friends own, you know, those fancy man cave garage condo things. It was a good time to check my tie downs, ensure everything is still snug, and they were. I found out the truck has a 60 gallon tank, so I was actually able to get to Tulsa on less than half a tank, no problem. It was at Tulsa when I realized the 12 volt outlets weren't actually working in the truck, so my phone was on low battery, and that's when I realized I forgot to bring a phone charger. I ended up using my laptop to charge my phone with an iPhone charging cable I bought at the Hard Rock <laughs> Hotel's gift shop. What a mess. In the truck, I was able to use my massive battery bank to power the phone and the dash cam the next day for the last leg of the trip. I'm glad I brought it though, because it really saved me. I wasn't able to find what the fuse was in the truck, so, and, I, and you know, we were on a schedule, so I didn't have time to go looking either. We did keep getting split up though, due to traffic and there being, I think it was five or six of us in trucks and trailers, so having the Zello app on our phone for voice comms was like really, really handy. One issue we did have though was finding truck stops that could fit a truck and a trailer, and some of them could fit a truck or trailer, but there were six of us trucks and trailers, so yeah, that was kind of a pain. We kind of pretty much had to settle with truck stops. The worst part of the commute though was going through downtown Dallas. I don't know why we went that route. Um, there was a ton of construction with really narrow lanes that were repainted, and then they had concrete barriers on each side. And uh, with the truck and trailer, I mean, there was less than a foot of space on both sides. And it was extra tight, especially when we next went next to a semi because they're so wide. It was really, really mentally exhausting couple of hours going through downtown Dallas and it sucked. It was also annoying because like in many metro areas, you have to keep yourself in an appropriate lane if you want to stay on the highway that you want to be on, else you'll, you know, it'll exit you off onto something else. We took I-35 all the way back home and that was a much easier drive. And we even did that um, in a single trip, in a single day. Um, that goes down the Fort Worth side, so if you have to go down to Austin from anywhere in the Midwest, definitely don't go through Dallas, go through Fort Worth. Never again, Dallas. Never again. We first stopped by the hotel the event was using so we could early register. That was a nightmare. The area had terrible traffic and construction, and then the hotel parking lot was really tight, and there were already six plus trucks and trailers there before we got there. Fun times. We then went to check in at our hotel because we had three hours to kill until they'd actually let us in Dakota to drop the trailers and cars off at the track. When we did get there though, we were basically at the end of the huge line of rigs waiting for the previous event to leave because apparently they were doing some event there that day. Once we got in, we unloaded the cars and tools and crap into the garages and it was already dark at that point. Man, the garages are so nice. Each one had a ba private bathroom too. So much nicer than the public restrooms at the two local tracks that I'm used to going to. The merch store and workout facility, uh, they were basically directly outside of our garages, so we had to park our trucks and trailers a little ways away, but it wasn't too big of a deal. We did have the benefit of being right by the Coda Cafe and merch store, so there's that. 
The garages would have been a little better if they had a shelf that ran along the edges that you could put your crap on, but they didn't, so we just had to put all our crap and like line it along the walls and the sides. It worked, but it was pretty annoying. So at the hotel we were at, uh, you have to go on a little mini toll road to get to the track, and they don't take tickets. As you drive through them, you see a bunch of flashes go off, and they photograph your license plates, and then they mail you a bill later. So I'm gonna guess that my friend will probably get four bills from dropping off and picking up the trailer at the track, and the rental company will probably get a bunch from the trips I did with the rental truck without the trailer attached, going back and forth from the hotel and the track. We'll see how that plays out, but I'm guessing they'll charge me a service fee to play middleman. So this is embarrassing, but I have a confession to make. I did have a minor fender bender with a truck and a light pole in the hotel parking lot. I'm not used to driving a 22 foot long truck. Yes, I repeat, 22 foot long. And it had a backup camera, but they had like the federally legal minimum size three inch screen for the backup camera in a dark parking lot. And yeah, basically I was backing up. My friend is actually there with me and he didn't see it either. And I was just gonna back into the spot until I felt the tires hit the curb but there was a light pole at the corner of the parking spot, so the bumper made contact before the tires got to the curb, so yeah. It was weird to me because I see accidents all the time where a car will hit a truck and then the truck's completely unscathed, but the car's demolished. I was backing up maybe one to two miles per hour and somehow it bent the bumper in into the metal body panel. Ugh, and being aluminum, it means fixing it costs more. Oh well, that's what insurance is for. We did have one scary moment on the way back. Texas has impossibly short ramps that go from a raised highway down to a lower service road along the highway. My friend turned his signal on to exit, so I figured we're, you know, stopping for gas or food or whatever, and I followed right behind him. And as soon as I came over the crest, we were both standing on the brakes. Holy shit. Whew, it was sketchy. Pucker factor 10. Their on-ramps are just terrible. They just end. No room to get merged in. No warning signs telling you that's a short ramp. So you go from 70 miles an hour to basically needing to stop in what felt like a 50-foot ramp. On-ramps are the same way too. If nobody lets you in, uh, you basically get into an accident. It's a terrible design. I also uh, had a lucky moment. I asked Inzello at a toll plaza if they take card as my friend was in front paying and so he went ahead and paid for me as well. Then later that night I asked at dinner what happens if you don't have cash because I was just curious and he said they tell you to pull ahead, wait on the shoulder, and then they make you wait for highway patrol to show up and then they write you a ticket. What the hell? That is absolutely asinine, stupid, unfair. It's 2019, give with the program, take card. We noticed the guys with the closed trailers were a lot more affected by the wind. That's fairly obvious though. They had to adjust their tongue weight at the first stop because the wind was causing them to do a little bit of swaying. Once they got the tongue weight dialed in, they didn't have any issues. The open trailers, like the one I had, um, while they weren't affected by the wind, had another big downside though. Despite having washed my car right before the trip, it was raining when we were going through Dallas, so by the time we got there, my car was disgusting. What sucked even worse is there weren't any car washes anywhere near the track. I realize if I'm paying good money for professional photographers to be taking pictures of my car while I'm on the track, I better get my car washed. I found a really weird dinosaur themed car wash a long ways from the track in a questionable area of town, but I went ahead and went out there and got my car clean. Much better. Once we got our stuff unloaded at the track, um, we dropped the trailers. We left the trailers in the Coda parking lot basically. We weren't worried about the trailers being stolen because our trailers were like 10 parking spots away from like challenge Ferrari trailer and a bunch of race team trailers, which had stacks and stacks, like tens of thousands of dollars worth of slicks just sitting right outside in the open where anyone can steal them. So out of all the things to steal, I think our trailers would be pretty low on that list. But anyway, after that, we went back to our hotel, checked in, dropped our stuff off, and then uh, we just walked down to the Chili's and ate and drink and have a good time. We didn't overdo it though because we obviously had to get up for um, our first driver's meeting. They said if you miss the driver's meeting, you didn't drive, period, no exceptions. So yeah, I think that about covers my road trip down there though. If you haven't fallen asleep out of boredom yet, stay tuned. The next video will be about the facilities and how awesome it is there. See ya.